Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the third day of the Festival Week webinar of the 2025 Initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 Initiatives Coordination Group. Before we go into our work today, let's have a short moment of silence uniting across distance with the light of our minds and love of our hearts. Visualizing the network of light covering the entire planet. And we come together as one world group. united with the intention of the will to good, serving humanity, manifesting the new civilization, So welcome to our gathering. Today we have a very special reason to be together as we will be sharing and meditating on how we can overcome differences between groups and nations as we work together for the joint purpose of manifesting the new civilization. And I want to welcome uh, Frida Kemp to, uh, for the introductory statement. But before doing that, um, I just realized I forgot to mention, uh, we have a parallel Russian translation, uh, and that's the link to this channel is available in chat window. I will say this now in Russian. Добро пожаловать. Спасибо, что вы сегодня присоединились. Параллельный перевод на русский язык осуществляется на канале YouTube, на линк который вы сможете найти в чате. Чат — это внизу контрольной панели, в окошке там есть линк. Если вы не нашли его, напишите вопрос, мы вам пришлем персонально. Спасибо. And so now I invite Frida to uh, share the introductory statement. Everyone and welcome. Uh, this is our seventh and final or synthesizing webinar in this series on manifesting the new civilization. Um, each group has had the opportunity to present a, a vision of this new civilization. And I certainly invite you, if you haven't uh, seen uh, the previous six, to uh, simply go on the YouTube for the 2025 initiative um, and download uh, some of the previous webinars. So the purpose of this um, webinar series was to set the pattern for cooperation by focusing on areas of agreement and helping to build a field of resonance between our six groups. So thanks to this uh, group of six pioneering organizations for participating in this webinar series. Uh, as Alec has just mentioned, um, we are also providing this uh, webinar in Russian. And uh, as he mentioned, uh, that information is in the chat box. 
We're seeking to work in group formation and under the law of group progress as outlined by Joelle Kuhl in Esoteric Psychology. This particular initiative focuses on groups in three countries, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Russia, with the objective of bringing about harmony and resonance in support of our theme, Manifestation of the New Civilization. Master DK also tells us that the work of the group members is to keep, as a group, in close rapport with the inner groups or ashrams, which form one large active group. So today we're hopefully demonstrating this inner unity in an outer expression uh, through this webinar and the webinar series. And finally, we're also getting to know one another. We're getting to know one another as groups, not as individuals, in the hopes for future unity and cooperation. Thank you. Throughout our initial webinars, which happened between Libra and Sagittarius, each of six groups had a chance to share their vision of the new civilization and work they do manifest in that vision. The sharing of all groups showed that we have a shared vision working each and own segment of the plan through own service activities. The six groups that participate in this project and who joining us today in the circle are the following groups. And I'm going in the alphabetical order of English alphabet. Ashram School of Four Race from Russia. The Sandile House Group from the United Kingdom. Wisdom Group from the United States. International Scientific School of Universology from Russia. World Goodwill from the United Kingdom and the School for Esoteric Studies from the United States. And I just read it and I realized that it's not an alphabetical order, so please forgive me. That would be the order that we will call the groups to join uh, the sharing. Uh, we try to arrange the groups that it would be uh, triangle, of countries highlighted through sequence of groups presenting. Today, the purpose of our work is for the groups to share and reflect together in one circle of what we can do to overcome our differences, to work together for the manifestation of the new civilization. This is an experiment and uh, technological experiment as well. So things might go wrong. Uh, so we just keep our mind open and uh, if any glitches will happen in the system, just Please let's maintain our group unity and subjective telepathic connection. One note I want to suggest for us as, as a meditative attitude when as we listen to each group is to remember that there are 49 ashrams, which of which has own function, own quality, and own role to play in manifesting the divine plan. In a way, each of the presented groups uh, today have their own vision, have their own function, own quality, and own role to play in manifesting the plan. Let's remember that. The way how we will go today about uh, the order of presentation. First, each 
group representative will have four minutes for the initial sharing. As three minutes pass, there will be sound of the bell, just to let you know that you have one more minute left. And then at the end of four, uh, the fourth minute, if you're not finished yet, we will mute you. Nothing personal, just the beauty of the seventh ray in work. After that, we will have, after each presenter, we'll have a short period of silence. After each, after all six representatives shared, we will have a minute of silence to uh, to collect, um, collect uh, impressions and lift them up for our meditation. After that, we will have the second round of sharing when each of the group representatives will be invited to share what are the resonant, the most resonant points they heard from other speakers. So that would be the time to weave together and to build up on each other's impressions, creating a synthetic vision. After this second section, we will have another minute of silence. One thing I just have to say that in this second section, we also will keep the limit of four minutes uh, per participant. If you have less than to say, don't be stressed out to say to fill up four minutes, just please keep the limit of four minutes. And in the third part of the sharing, we will have a synthetic sharing where each member will have another minute to synthesize for synthetic statement to share the most important impressions they can contribute into the group center. And after that, Alex Radcliffe will uh, synthesize all the sharings and we will go into meditation, which Katya Kaufman will lead us. Thank you. With this, I will open the floor for the sharing. And with the sound of the bell, we invite the first group to share their impressions on this topic. Все был колокольчик. Можно говорить. Так. Школа нашего седьмого луча в России. The Ashram School of the Four Rain Russia. And I, as the leader, I greet all spiritual brothers of international community as the beginning of joint actions and joint work of forming the new spiritual consensus of one spiritual teaching of the coming era of Aquarius. And I and we offer to connect and to start joint work the following points of cooperation. First, annual conferences, international conferences of groups in the context of certain topics or, or subjects. First, the principle of Ray characteristic of seekers and aspirants as the basis of building of this group. Second, methods and definitions of race of each of the three bodies of personality, ray of integration, ray of the soul, and ray of the monad as the basis of formation of the spiritual path of this subject. Three, distribution of race and students of astral, distribution of race of 
astral polarization students and mental polarization students. Number four, structure of the subject of lesser school, which has at least five courses of a certain specific line of ray in the context of each group and course. Second big point, annual scientific conferences as, as uh, showing the school of each, the work of each school in each civilizational directions, religion, philosophy, psychology, culture, history, civilization, history of culture, anthropologics, pedagogics, universal work, mysteriology, astrology. These are only part of the directions we can discuss. We can discuss the works of existing departments in each area, written papers and being able to apply them not only in the Temple of Russia, but also in the international context of joint education. Number three, an opportunity of sharing methodological basis for teaching and learning this discipline disciplines in spiritual key, methodological work with consciousness and group studies, group classes, hierarchical stru structure of the building of the school, determining the levels of matter of science in each of the three body of personality and spiritual connection of student with his group, individual and group soul, building of the path to gaining the spiritual antakarana as opportunity of several group units. So, and, and the basis and the last one, the basis of mystery ceremonial work, mystery work, the structure of mysteries, the principle of building group units and their work with one soul, leader, mentor, and astrological uh, spe specifics and on and specific moments on the evolutional and involutionary arc. I hope I made it in, in four minutes, but I think I did it, and I invite you to discuss this specific proposals, and we have a lot to share in these directions. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, the Ashram School of Forays. Let's have a moment of silence. Thank you. Now I invite the Sandel House group for sharing. Thank Please you. unmute yourself. Yes, I've just done it. Thank you very much. Thank you um, for that presentation. Um, the work that we do together shares a common purpose and goal. Throughout the year, 
throughout every day, we dedicate ourselves to modeling soul qualities, silently working where life has placed us. And in our own sphere of influence, bringing alive the teachings in everyday relationships. And this is achievable by each and every one of us because of our inner meditative work with the laws and principles of the soul. And together on a daily basis, we are creating an evolving group field, which supports and strengthens not only our work, but the work of the new group of world servers. And this ongoing daily work is something that we are each dedicated to because we are catalysts for change. And together, we are promoting Christ consciousness and awareness of the livingness of the soul and the wisdom, which is uniquely ours within ourselves and within others and situations that we contribute to near and far. We are living demonstrations of soul qualities and we use the power of thought our creative ability to work in thought so that we build these positive, constructive thought forms that populate the um, thought climate. And by doing this daily, together, at a distance, we are creating a new consciousness which can impress and inspire and direct the leaders and thinkers that bring plans into being. And this is our service. So the work that we do together fortifies this inner work and outer expression. And together we cooperate with this in a diversity of ways, which is our strength. There is strength in numbers, there is strength in our diversity and there is a growing strength in the connectivity and the coming together on a regular basis so that we can share and inspire each other and fortify the work that we do on behalf of humanity and hierarchy. Thank you. Thank you, the Sundown House group. We have a moment of silence. Thank you. Two logistical comments. Um, we sound the bell just to signal there is one more minute for the sharing. And I'm asking Amira Daniela if the sound of the bell is too loud. No, it's good. It's okay. Thank you. So now uh, we invite wisdom group from the United States to share their impressions. Okay. Yes, hello everyone. Our group is made up of members who have come together from many different streams of wisdom. 
we recognize and respond to the impulse and vision held by the ashrama synthesis. And therefore, we have formed our group along the lines of a seventh ray organization. For, this, for us, this means that we recognize the leadership capacity of each member and we respond to each other's vision, concepts, ideas, methods, and approaches as free agents who choose to cooperate as we strive to fulfill our individual and group service functions. Initially, members of our group came together inspired by the works of Lucille Cedarcrans. Since then, there has been both a shared appreciation for her work and legacy, but a growing emphasis on how her teachings have matured each of us as practitioner disciples, able to utilize the soul, mind, brain alignment to apply our own wisdom, inspiration, and leadership to the tasks we are called upon to address. Paradoxically, it is through this heightened creative individuality that our group functions best. This brings me to what I feel best describes my individual and to some degree our group's response to the question, how can we overcome national and group differences to work together for the manifestation of the new civilization? My impression is that there are two main approaches to this question. The first is to seek the authority of one's own soul expression, to be fearless in meditation, and to express loving kindness to everyone, recognizing that each human being is a spiritual soul in the process of self-realization and that no one has the right to impinge in any way upon their freedom. The second is to recognize and to work toward establishing right human relations between all people, regardless of conditions, and to actively adopt and seek to implement the four freedoms, which were articulated more than 70 years ago by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. They are the freedom of speech and expression, freedom of worship, freedom from fear, and the freedom from want. President Roosevelt concluded his speech with words that guide us today. Freedom means the supremacy of human rights everywhere. Freedom is found first within oneself as one experiences unity and identification with the absolute. After that has taken root, it is natural to offer loving and kind support in service to humanity. The basis of our relationships must be built on the foundations of an awakened heart and mind. If we don't have that as a starting point, then what we are left with is just another set of well-meaning rules and platitudes. In truth, every person is an expression and embodiment of the Christ Buddha. For most, that is an aspect of their identity that is hidden and unrealized through the pattern, though the pattern of it works through like a yeast within the depth of each human being to bring that Christ Buddha into full and perfect expression. As we gain in our understanding of our true nature, it is impossible to overlook the needs and circumstances of others. There comes a time when the light within us ignites the flame within others, and thus Hold a moment of silence. Thank you, Wisdom Group. And now we invite 
International Scientific School for Universology from Russia. And Tatiana wanted to share uh, this, this screen, right? Right. Thank you. So here I would like to, to talk about the proposals of International Scientific School of Universology manifesting the new age, constructing bridges between three countries. The long-awaited and powerful call for oneness is heard as the universal joy of being, the necessary conditions for a new era, the happiness of being in oneness with the universe, living according to its laws and wisdom. The minds are rebuilt, a wave of light is warming hearts ready for unity. We are filled with gratitude for all of you in the Project Initiative 2025, who spread the message of unity and oneness through service projects, educational outreach, pure human kindnesses, and other forms of inspired actions. We should unite in oneness as an example for the other world, progressive people, active business, common people, and demonstrate the oneness in effective deeds for transformation the human being into a star being living in harmony with our planet as a part of universal wisdom. We all know our global civilization problems. Uh, they are spheres when we should direct our thoughts, our energy, our cooperation work in order to bond the human being of future, who is aware of its energy, it's conscious, cosmic cos uh, conscious, and can join all elements uh, bearing the fifth one. It is uh, possible only if we create the planet temple of new education in new era, with uh, the schools of every ray and unique features of uh, this age we can um, say in such way awareness of belonging to the large system of life, awareness of unified and immutable lords of the development of life, ability of collective co-creation, awareness of the need to be useful for the society, collaborative relationships with other people, responsibility for self, other people, team, humanity, and of our planet, understanding the goal of human evolution. So we propose this to create our common future together, to ant anticipate the common energy work to strengthen evolutionary trends in mankind development, to form a concept of the balanced development of man, nature and civilization, to coordinate trends in the development of the society and needs of people, to build a model of civil society, including the system of the public self-government, the adoption of the new role of man, as the creator of harmony in relationships with the collective cooperation, the evolution of production relations, changing the stat status of an employ employee in the direction of self-management in the collective strategy, to create new effective technologies, which are a synthesis of the world culture and scientific achievements. I introduce a multi level universal system of governance in the society and inter-society relations to form the core system evolutionary worldview, system logical thinking and the ideology of collective strategy. To create a system of continuous education throughout the person's life and to introduce the system of the healthy lifestyle. And we know that we are living in the world, in the fifth uh, root uh, race, um, that consists of 12 uh, nations. Every of these nations has its uh, knowledge and its past, and we should uh, join them in the core of the lotus of the world. And it is the path to the six Ruth race. So we Thank you, Universology School. We have now a moment of silence.
And now I invite World Goodwill. Hello, everyone. Um, well, I haven't um, written anything down, so what I'm going to say is completely off the top of my head or out of the middle of my tummy or <laughs> out of my heart. I don't know. But I'd like to reflect upon um, how do we overcome national and group differences in order to work together? How do we understand that our differences are strengths? How do we recognize that um, the differences in national and in group psychology are beautiful manifestations of the many differing combinations of rays and subrays that are possible and we know are possible and we know that they are all resonating in harmony with the the different rhythms of energies which are flowing into the planet. And obviously, we're at a high point of inflow of energies at the moment during the festival week that happens every seven years. And how do we see those bridges between nations, between groups emerging, being strengthened, and how those are connecting um, horizontally at different levels and also vertically at different levels, how we weave together <clears throat> the planetary antikarana with our various differing skills and talents. And <clears throat> how we connect what we are doing as esoteric groups with what's happening with outer groups, how we recognize the beginnings, the outer signs of these inner energies manifesting through many different initiatives. And I think it's a great challenge for all of us to be able to connect with energies and weave them into forms which can nourish and speak to people of different levels of consciousness. And I think that's a particular challenge at the moment as we're seeing throughout the planet that forms are being woven and created that are speaking to the lower levels of consciousness. And so it's a, a great challenge for all of us working within the esoteric community, within the spiritual community to respond to that and to find ways of creatively and positively responding to it. And I think I will end there and leave the floor open for further contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Let's have pause. Now we invite the School for Esoteric Studies to share.
please unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, you for the opportunity to participate. Uh, we all know that separatism is the great heresy that we are called to address. To help us maintain the goodwill and mutual respect necessary, we would suggest a collective focus on five soul qualities. First, dispassion, or seeing clearly what is needed and where we need to focus. Much of the divisiveness that we are experiencing in our societies comes from being driven by emotion rather than love wisdom, particularly by what is being called the Trump effect, that is enjoying the surges of pleasure from feeling superior to others, or the rushes of adrenaline from anger at other groups, or the self-righteousness from feeling entitled. We need to ensure that we are not adding to this emotional state through our own anger or frustration. And we need to exercise the discipline required so that our initial reflexive action, which is always chemically based, is trained to be one of curiosity rather than fear. Dispassion also involves discarding what we as humanity have outgrown. That is old stereotypes, methods of objectifying or dismissing others, and particularly all forms of bigotry. What we are learning is that rather than having firmly rejected those ways of dehumanizing others, we have simply suppressed them through moral judgment. Now that we have world leaders modeling this bigotry, it has risen to the surface again. We need a more permanent solution. Second, discernment or the ability to differentiate the harmless from the harmful, to collaborate rather than compete. To do this, we need to be continually strengthening our moral compass, our ability to hear that still small voice that will alert us when we are about to harm others or ourselves. Third, discrimination or critical thinking and the ability to evaluate what we are told. Discrimination also involves determining our best role, what is ours to do, and recognizing that we cannot do everything. We need to trust others to do their part. Fourth, detachment. We will only be successful if we release any image of the perfect way to work together and what the ultimate outcome should be. We live in a probabilistic universe and we need to be willing to let the future evolve in a manner that works for us all. Our commitment needs to be to the common good not our personal preferences. Fifth and finally, harmlessness. We will be able to manifest a shared positive vision if we learn to live together harmlessly, something that we have not yet collectively experienced. The Tibetan has stated harmlessness is not negative or sweet or kindly activity, as so many believe. It is a state of mind and one that in no way negates firm or even drastic action. This means that we must be able to stand firm and say, this is not okay, or enough is enough, rather than simply focusing on sending light and love. We know that thought is what forms our world we need to be willing to deal with the negative thought forms that are already formed and dissipate them so that we can come together constructively. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Now let's have a um, minute of silence together holding hold the impressions share it and as we enter this silence i want to also mention that besides six participating groups there are three more circles of esoteric meditators working now with us one in each country bringing a number of groups together to nine groups
Now we invite representatives of six groups to share their impressions that came listening to other participants in this circle. Sharing resonant ideas, building up the group's vision. So I invite a you who is feels the impulse to go first to start the sharing. If you're ready to share, please don't forget to unmute yourself. And I saw uh, Aurana, your microphone was unmuted, so please go ahead. So we here heard all groups. Each group showed their op opportunities, possibilities, and the need for unity that unites all of us and what we all gathered here for. However, I would like to stress one important thing. In order to act in an active manner and be able to change something, first you need to change ourselves. By changing ourselves and getting certain level of initiation, certain level of spiritual discipleship, it is possible to then invite those who you can guide or you can put your part of work. Therefore, if it's only a, a group where we meet by common interest and wish to understand something, the spiritual potential will be limited because only good, great wishes invite such a gathering. Therefore, we must discern the principle of community as a theosophic community, other communities which bridges people working in one line of work and to separate and discern it from the school, the real school which exists based on hierarchical differentiation, hierarchical system. The spiritual disciple who has certain initiation, his group of disciples, the group of students of this students, group of students of their students of their students, which means this must be connected with a certain initiatory status status of initiation. Therefore, we must start by understanding our race and initiation initiation status. Then the group will be cre can gather and be connected with certain ashram and sub-ashram structure. And also, first of all, we need to look at whether the anahata of a person is open. The anahata is not enough. Ajna must be very quite developed. It must be not mystical, not backspace, and not go into mystic states, but be very precisely oriented to Sakasrara and exit to to spiritual to the to the causal plane. This is special requirements for spiritual discipleship. I would like to stress that the professional approach. Yes, I, I finish. The spiritual path is a profession. It's a profession equal to uh, uh, equal to a monk. If a monk is making it together with outer life, then it's only a society of people who are goodwilling, but the future will be done by professional spiritual schools. Thank you.
I hope I hope I didn't touch our ego. I just wanted to share my my vision of the level of professionality in the of each school in this new, very complex and not easy uh, era transformation to Aquarius. Thank you, Aurana. Siba, Aurana. I invite other participants to share. I realize that uh, two of the participants were muted on my side, so please uh, mute yourself if you're not ready to speak, and if you're ready, please do so. There is one raised hand, Cheryl Minden. She's self-muted, I think. Terry, Terry, you are unmuted. I apologize, there was a technical glitch on my site. Uh, I, if I interrupted anyone, please forgive me and please proceed. Hello, this is uh, Greg from the Wisdom Group. And it just strikes me that uh, there is such a um, level of expertise and, and spiritual uh, experience and ability represented by all the groups that are contributing here today. <clears throat> and I think that uh, one of the things that we need to be aware of is is that there is such a, uh, a call on the part of humanity to awaken to their own spiritual uh, potential, their own spiritual um, response to the movement within of their own soul's nature. And I think that we need to uh, be s making opportunities available for people to uh, discover, express, and develop that uh, that uh, spiritual quality within within people who have probably not put that as a life priority uh, in front of themselves before. I think that this um, the new civilization is really calling for people to uh, make that uh self-declaration and and determination to work along the lines of of good uh you know the greatest good for the greatest number and and uh people have mentioned this uh, in their presentations the importance of not only modeling this in our own personal interactions but for creating forums for people to uh be able to uh, discover this within themselves and to develop those soul qualities that they're that they are feeling moving within them within themselves so i i just think that this is such an important aspect of the work to not preach to the choir uh well, i think we all know what we know and i i think that the call for of humanity 
to uh, help awaken to its soul potential is really the uppermost uh, up, uppermost need that we have. Thank you. Um, this is Dorothy Riddle with the School for Esoteric Studies. Um, I appreciate all of the contributions that we have had today, and I agree that that we we need to model within ourselves. Um, without being unduly alarmist, what I'm struck by is at least in uh, the United States. I, I see us living in a time which is actually quite parallel to when the Tibetan was writing during World War II. It's very easy for us, it can be very easy for us to do the things that bring us pleasure by being kind to others, you know, reaching out, uh, uh, participating in a, in a positive way and closing our eyes to the tremendous harm that is being done every minute. And we have to, I think, also take on the responsibility of learning to stand up and say no, but in a way that does not further escalate violence and dissension. It is very difficult. It is not nearly as much fun as being friendly and kind. And I think that if we leave that out of how we work together, we are not going to make the kind of progress that we want. And we're going to be held accountable also to the fact that we are not uh, addressing the harm that is present in the world. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> um, may I speak, Alex? Always welcome. Um, I'd just like to echo some of the thoughts that have been shared before me. Um, I think that's a very interesting point that Dorothy makes about how we stand for the good without standing against. And that was something I think the Tibetan emphasized when he talked about people of goodwill, that that, that was their one of their primary characteristics, that they stood for, not against. But in a, as, as I think Dorothy pointed out, it's, we still have to say, we may have to point out that things are wrong and I think it's also interesting um, what was uh, said by Orana about professionalizing spirituality, becoming spiritual professionals, or perhaps vocation vocation of spirituality, um, and how we find ways, as as was said by the um, uh, contributor from the Wisdom Group, Sonia. Wait, see your name again. It's uh, Greg. Sorry, Greg. Um, making those opportunities available. How do we? Um, how do we share without appearing to be posing as experts? How do we find ways to? open opportunities without appearing superior. And I think that's one of the, the real difficulties that we have in this work is that I think that those who are just on the brink of being, if we like, spiritual, do have a great sort of barrier or glamour about what's perhaps perceived as a kind of the self-righteousness of those who are spiritual. How do we transcend that? 
Anyway, I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. International Scientific School of Universology. I'm fascinated by how much in common there is in the teachings and values presented here by all groups. Um, I think that uh, we should uh, share our strategies. Uh, we can uh, share our ideas and uh, best technologies uh, that work in our schools. We can organize mutual education and each group uh, can educate others about their concepts. We can create common education processes based on the common elements of our groups. Uh, I think to make our work more stable uh, and to foster the group impact, uh, we can create the permanent coordinating council of the festival we can consider the main crisis of our time and find ways to overcome them. Uh, we can identify the main areas of cooperation in the name of the oneness of the planetary spiritual forces. We can create a mission statement documents and an image of the future of what we are going to achieve in 2025. <laughs> uh, and we also can call other spiritual organization in order to form the starry brotherhood of the planet leading mankind to the new era of Aquarius. I think the uh, area of Aquarius uh, differs from area of uh, fishes because here our this should be more active, more uh, uh, understandable to uh, common people. So our um, common uh, work uh, should be uh, uh, should uh, make such protective circle uh, to all the world, to all mankind, to every man or woman uh, that uh, would like live in prosperity, harmony, peace, freedom, love, planetary development, according to the spirit of new age. So, uh, it was the question here, uh, how we can overcome national and group differences to work together. I think that uh, now times it's very easy. Uh, we can organize conferences not only in the internet, uh, but uh, also uh, in our countries. We can visit our countries, visit each other. Um, I very appreciate uh, each uh, leader here because uh, there are now so much so many people in the world so we should meet we should uh, be friends uh, we should cooperate we should organize uh, conferences for forums and other um, interesting uh, uh, initiatives and uh, be together so in such a way we can overcome all differences that we see now in our, our world. And in such a way, we can manifest the new civilization uh, with our style of uh, thinking, style of uh, our life, style of our meetings. Um, all these things are very valuable now because it's a bridge to new era. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, okay, Alex, is it all right if I go next? Uh, yes, please, Janet. Okay. Um, yes. 
Uh, we um, offer um, a correspondence uh, way of working with the materials that were gifted to us by Roberto Azajoli. And a few years, and people submit meditation reports on a monthly basis. And um, reading them a few years ago, um, I was very struck by the fact that people, our co-workers, our uh, disciples, if you like, our co-workers, um, were stopped from working by the overwhelm of negativity. So they were unable to stand and take a professional discipleship look at the work that we are doing together. They had been neutralized, if you like, by the overwhelm of negativity. And so this call to stand and to be active within the field, which serves hierarchy and humanity, requires each and every one of us to have a very strong inner connection with the subtle realms and our souls. It requires us to have belief and faith, a positive uh, regard for the future. And we become realists, we see the work that's needed, and we participate as group members, building in the field of thought, and then choosing individually to work in the ways that are available to us to serve. We become radioactive particles where life has placed us. We become torch bearers, um, and we go out every day to do this work horizontally as well as vertically. And there's a wonderful quote here from Krishnamurti. Um, it, it, I'll share it. The problem of the individual is also the world's problem they are not two separate and distinct processes. You are the repository of all humanity. You are the world and the world is you. And if there is a radical transformation in the structure of an individual's psyche, it will affect the whole consciousness of man. And a, a wonderful exercise, I think I've said this before, but a wonderful exercise is to pledge when you watch the news to recognize and celebrate the positive work of the new group of world servers and the hierarchy as it's relayed with to us within the daily dose of news bulletins which in themselves can be very overwhelming but look for the positive and look to use the observer, the silent observer, to revision and look for what's emerging, because that is our work, as well as what we do daily. Thank you. There are several raised hands, Alexander. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to okay. invite our audience today for sh to share impressions live, but we invite you to share impressions on the Festival Week sharing board and the link to which you can find in the chat window. And thank you for understanding uh, as we are limited in time. So now I invite us to have a minute of silence before we go to the synthesizing section of our sharing.
a heartfelt thanks to everyone, all the participants for sharing your very fine thoughts on this topic and to everyone who's attended, joined us in this experiment. This is the seventh in this series of international sharings. Alex, I apologize. Yeah. Well, before we go to the final synthesizing, I want to invite each participant to sh for 30 seconds to share their synthesizing statement, and then we'll have the final synthesizing statement. Okay, great. Thank you. So I, I will call now uh, each group to uh, come forward and, and for 30 seconds to share final statement. So uh, we will start in the reverse order uh, to how we started. So I invite the School for Esoteric Studies to share. Thank you. Um, I would like to just comment that we are spiritual beings, but we are here on a physical plane. And we are called to act here on the physical plane, not simply to meditate, but to address the harm that is being done and to uh, live out our vision for the new civilization by making sure that we not only act positively, but we end harm. Thank you. World goodwill, please. Thank you, pardon, I was muted there. Um, I just like to end by reminding us of that very significant statement by the Tibetan that the heart of humanity is sound to reflect on what that means and then it seems to me that everything that everybody has been saying today has been about the question how do we speak to the heart of humanity how do we kindle in their hearts some of the fire of the will to good that is in ours thank you Thank you. The Universology School. Tatiana, please unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, we would like to um, propose uh, the special type of meditation, the circle of protection or protective circle um, it's a new technology launching uh, that joined us uh, with hierarchy. Uh, it's uh, our um, a new method of creation of the protective cycle, uh, cycle uh, that gives uh, possibility to overcome the destructive scenario of human life. Uh, so uh, we are um, going to uh, organize such protective cycle uh, every week or maybe two times a month to be together uh, we can show this technology uh, also our second proposal is to uh, organize mutual uh, studying in our school uh, we have the causal system world view school uh, that prepares the person for processes of forming a casually integral image of the world. Uh, one more proposal. In March, we organize uh, the Polish uh, International Forum of Universology in Poland. Uh, it will be a scientific conference, universal quality system for managing life and business. It will be round table, the civilization union of the new era and seminar in verse of destiny. Uh, 
So we would uh, like to see everybody of you here in Poland or in Russia, uh, in all countries where we have uh, universology groups. So see you <laughs> soon. <laughs> Thank you. Wisdom group. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, I think there's so many uh, uh, good uh, and positive things that, that different groups can offer. And, and uh, one suggestion is uh, that we have a, a bulletin board sort of uh, 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 format online where different groups can offer their different uh, programs and outreach activities and and discipleship programs and so forth. I've heard so many uh, uh, references during this phone call to uh, really quite remarkable opportunities for people to, who are wanting to uh, you know, develop their own spirituality. I think also the, uh, the thing that has been such a, a key part of, of our uh, approach uh, in the wisdom group has been the the teachings around loving kindness, which uh, as uh, as somebody pointed out, is not just about politeness and and being kind, but by being having that uh, that spiritual understanding and the spiritual will not to be in opposition as uh, one one of the one of the participants mentioned, but to really express the um, the uh, well, I've, uh, I'm at a loss. But uh, yes, I think it's so important that we bring our own spiritual realization to to group problems and issues. Sandel. The Sunday House Group. Thank you. Um, so our group work is to make manifest the laws and principles of the soul, bringing them to life in everyday situations, near and far. That's our service work. Thank you. Ashram School for Race. Thank you. Thank you for letting me conclude this wonderful, wonderful conference and meeting. And uh, I would like to share, I hope it's not too radical, doesn't sound too radical. Working in a certain ashram of a certain ray, not only a certain ashram of the a certain array of the aspect, I consider that there's there should be no fight against negative and evil. Lord of the ashram teaches me that any fight with the evil only attracts evil and any any hour uh, stepping into a, a fight is is uh, is the wrong way fighting evil is only multiplying evil we should stand inside the ashram structure by multiplying and pouring over our internal life of disciple, which is like a stump, internal stump of this, of his of, of the soul of the disciple, standing in the equality, in full equality and full state of in identification with one's spiritual stump and spiritual lord. The disciple emanates the spiritual power and pushes away all the structures. So no protective circles, but any protection is 
higher light of the hierarchy. To connect with the higher light of the hierarchy of light. And by this light, I'm radiating and giving the new path for people on a professional spiritual level. Now I invite Alex to share the synthesizing summary. Thank you. Now to sum it all up. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, beautiful thoughts, very wide ranging. And we could go on. Master Dwalkul did say that first we must find each other. And this we have done. And it has been said that there's strength. It's been said tonight there's strength in these numbers and there's strength in connecting. We honor and we respect our differences whilst going beyond to the third point. And what is that third point? How do we overcome national and group differences to manifest this new civilization, we, ourselves? We go beyond personality, we go beyond ray expressions, and we overcome our sense of individuality through realizing our unity and oneness. And we must demonstrate this through our practical deeds in the world and our work continuing to transform ourselves. We begin with the will to good has to be there. Essential goodwill moves us forward. We have an open mind, open hearts. We practice loving kindness harmlessness, and yes, we also take a stand for soul values in the world. The Dalai Lama said, don't just pray, do something. It is a challenge to weave together all these energies, but we are well placed to meet that challenge as we have seen here in this discussion as we are each a Christ Buddha. In the long history of the world, in all conflict, individual, national, international, we see elements of bigotry, stereotyping, bias, judgment, in short, knowing better what is right and what is wrong and what is best. But let us come back to the essential awareness. The change begins with me. So what is the perfect way for us to work together? To extrapolate from the Sufi mystic Rumi. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. There is a field. Let us meet each other there. And so let it be. Thank you again. Thank you, Alex. Now I invite Katya Kaufman to lead us in meditation. Hello. Let's breathe out the tensions of the discussion. Calm our feelings and clear our minds. 
to connect with the soul. And align within ourselves. Let's get united with energies of love and light and will to good. Let's visualize in the center of our group. Seven radiant lotuses, our group centers. Let's connect through them. You can extend the connection to the centers of the new group. Visualize the triangle of hierarchy. Shambhala and humanity. The C point of energy that we call Christ. Connected with Buddha at our synthesis and spirit of peace. We visualize the energy of the greater constellation that is working now And we see that energy. Flowing. We synthesize our visions. And lift them up. In the light of that energy. We potentiate the development of those concepts and practices through the next seven years. We put the intention of the work to overcome our differences through the vision of a greater purpose. Working together as one. Manifesting the plan and doing our part. Bringing in the vision to humanity. Precipitate in direction. And leading the way.
Visualize the triangle of the rings. One, two, and seven. Coming to the interplay. And we invoke the help of the ashram of synthesis. And as one, we say, from the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Из точки света, что в уме Бога, пусть свет струится в умы людей, да сойдет свет на землю. Из точки любви, что в сердце Бога, пусть любовь струится в сердца людей, да вернется Христос на землю. Из центра, где воля Бога известна, Пусть цель направит воли малые людские, та цель, которую знают и которой служат учителя. Из центра, что мы называем родом людским, пусть план любви и света осуществится, и да замкнет он дверь, за которой обитает зло. Да восстановит свет и любовь и могущество план на земле.
Thank you very much for participating today in our circle of groups gathering. Please let's continue working together as one world group linked subjectively, utilizing the energies of the festival week as the hierarchy asks us to do in our meditative service for humanity. Thank you very much. And we invite you to join multiple online activities that's happening, uh, organized by various groups around the world. You can learn about these activities at the Festival Week bulletin board. I uh, will share now the link to the bulletin board and it's in the chat window and among other events uh, happening this week, I invite you tomorrow to join the day four webinar of the, uh, of the 2025 initiative. This will be um, gathering tomorrow in which we'll participate circles of four groups, Bybridge Sanctuary Circle, Moria Federation and Northern Light Society, Circle the Hekal group in Jerusalem and the Hamsa group in Sunshine Coast, Australia. So please uh, join us uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, which is 7 p.m. GMT. And uh, it's a Christmas ceremony manifesting the network of light to prepare the way. And if your group would like to participate in the meditation and the ritual, please let us know in advance that we could may, uh, would share with you uh, necessary preparation for the ritual that will be happening. Otherwise, please join us tomorrow at 7 p.m. and if you just on your own prepare a few candles to light during the ceremony. Thank you very much. Light and love and power. So let it be and let us do our part. <laughs>